Hi, guess what I had for my birthday last year? A trail cam, yes, a trail cam, at long last. I've been after one of these for ages. In fact, my wife and I talked about it quite a bit. So we've got it, and one of the reasons we acquired this camera is because we knew something was coming in the garden, mostly at night, and it was digging up parts of our lawn. So we suspected badgers, and we weren't wrong. <laughs> yes, badgers, uh, and not only that, fox, birds, we got all sorts of things, cats, even a mouse. <laughs> You'll see all this later. You may be wondering what that piece of masking tape is doing on the bottom of the uh, LED screen. Well, that will all become apparent later. Uh, so this is it. It's the Togard H85, readily available on Amazon, eBay, etc, etc. And the price of these cameras tends to run from around 40 or so pounds, averaging around 60, 70 area. And there's lots of different models, all probably made in China, but uh, it works quite well, quite well. And I'll go through all the uh, information and how it works in a few moments. But anyway, it's a lot of fun leaving it out there overnight and then seeing what you've got the following morning. This is the ideal tool to have during lockdown. As we all know now, we're confined at home mostly. And because of that, what else to do? So perfect. If you've got a garden, if you're fortunate enough to have a garden, then uh, one of these I highly recommend. Well worth having, I think, definitely. So, okay, without more ado, let's have a look at the camera in more detail. Okay, so this is the booklet, quite well detailed. But as you can see here, plenty of information. Okay, we'll take this brown strip off. That was on there because, and as you will see, I was getting a lot of burnout in the foreground on the grass. It doesn't do it all the time, but it's annoying when it does do it. At the top there, you have the infrared zone. Here you have indicator zones, which uh, well, motion indicator on that side flashes blue and red, and a light sensor on that side. Here is the lens, and these are the three PIR sensors. One on either side, one in the middle, combined that gives a viewing angle of 120 degrees, so that's a pretty wide angle. And just at the bottom there, you have a microphone. Okay, so at the side here are the securing clips, and you can see that there's various holes and two tripod uh, screw threads there. But these here are for straps that are supplied with it, so you can actually secure it to a tree or whatever. Obviously, it's fully waterproof. It takes batteries, eight of them all together, but there's no way of uh, powering it from the mains or the transformer. The easiest way to open it, by the way, is to have it facing down. And access to the batteries is via this little strap here. Let's pull it down. It takes eight AA batteries and you're not to use rechargeables. So you would just use lithium or alkaline batteries, basically. You record onto media here. I've got a 32 gigabyte SanDisk. Uh, for output, you've got a mini USB there. Um, I'll quickly show you the card. It's a little tricky to get out. So I use a, a SanDisk 32 gig. You want to get a fairly fast one like this. This does the trick. Turn the device off first before you eject the card, by the way. <laughs> And one thing, one mantra you need to, to repeat to yourself is back up, back up, back up. If you caught something really great, get it onto the computer, back it up at least twice. That button there, by the way, is a Wi-Fi button. Should you want to use that with an app, which you can download. I don't personally bother with using Wi-Fi because I've always found them to be very flaky, the apps Ouch. in particular. Anyway, there's something a bit more uh, thrilling about putting the camera out in the evening and then picking up the following morning and seeing what you've got. To turn on, simply slide the switch towards setup. A moment or two later, up it comes. You can press the menu button and then go through all the parameters that it allows you to do to shoot stills and video or video and stills at different resolutions, capture times and duration. The instructions, if you haven't thrown them away already, guys, gives all the info you need. For a quick demo, here it is, speed it up. So, there is a default mode, and that's how the camera comes. Probably best to try it in that first. Now, I don't bother with photos, basically because I found them not particularly good. Even in daylight, the resolution's not fa fantastic. One reason for using the video mode is the fact that you've got thousands of potential still photos to use and select. And then you can always crop those in, and most computers allow you, or software allow you to grab a single frame. When set up to your liking, slide the switch across to on, Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Right, now you're now recording, and it will record up to a maximum 
with video of three minutes. I haven't used this camera for a couple of months, mostly due to bad weather, fog and rain, giving a miss it up lens, which though produces quite eerie results. So when editing this video, how to, or maybe how not to use a trail cam, I realized there were some options I'd not tried or even knew about. Thankfully, I still have the handbook. So here's some of the other features. In setup mode, press menu and then play, and then press mode and record a video or press shot and take still images. I didn't know that. Right, somehow I've got it actually recording now. Open the video, woo! Yep, it's recording. It's the first time I've actually been able to get that to record. So that's shot, there's mode. So a combination of menu and replay, shot and mode, enables you to shoot video or stills, raise the volume, reduce the volume, fast forward, etc., etc. But depending on whether you've got it set in playback mode or record mode. So before you even take it out into the field or your back garden, you can test it out that way and just see what the shot's gonna be like before you leave it out overnight. And actually, you can also, in record mode, increase or decrease audio volume. Oh yes, it can also make a coffee as well, but I didn't try that option. So there you go. It pays to read the handbook thoroughly and familiarize yourself with the camera, doesn't it, Nigel? Yes. As I alluded to earlier, the burnout, whiteout, at the lower third of the frame, is annoying. Probably if I raise the camera off the ground a bit more, it should have less of an effect. But I like to get down and dirty with the animals. Yeah, that sounds wrong. <laughs> so this is why I applied the transparent piece of masking tape to reduce the foreground brightness from the infrared lights. Still need some experimentation though. The one annoyance during video is the fluctuation in exposure. Bit of a bummer, but whether it's sparked by subject movement or proximity to the lens, I've no idea. Obviously, the bulb was placed too close to the camera here. Depth of field seems to be roughly a foot or so from the lens. Or to infinity and beyond. I thought I'd give it a whiz with the birds on our patio. <laughs> but inevitably, it wasn't long before a neighbor's cat turned up to eat the bird's food. As you can see, mealworms and the remains of a fat ball. One of the most useful features to mention is the data info that you can select to appear at the bottom of your still or video frame. From left to right at the bottom of the frame you'll see there's moon phase, battery life, date, time and temperature, both in centigrade and Fahrenheit. A very, very useful feature. No question is at night when this camera really comes into its own. Notice the exposure fluctuations? It's a shame. But you can't really expect perfection at this camera's price point. And if you really need professional results, then you need to spend a lot more money. Fortunately, when editing in Final Cut, I'm able to place a graduated mask at the bottom of the frame tone it down a tad, but you can only go so far when there's no pixels recorded.
Quite often I've noticed the subject is already in the frame and about to leave when the camera has decided to initiate capture. Actuation is quoted at just 0.3 seconds for release time, but that may just be for stills only. Video, it seems, takes much longer to boot up. Must say, I'm looking forward to seeing what can be captured during the spring, with hopefully more videos to come. I would like to know your thoughts if you have one of these cameras or are considering purchasing one, so please leave your comments below. Cheers! So there we have it folks, I think it's really good value for money and you can have a lot of fun with it if you're fortunate to have a garden of course. I haven't used it much over the winter, it's been so cold and if it's raining there's no point but in the spring it's going to be out, yeah, and we'll see what else we can capture. So there'll be a part two of this no doubt coming in the future. Okay that's it folks, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it, please subscribe, a lot more sort of garden life, wildlife, bird life, <laughs> photography to come. I've had to change my discipline since we can't travel so much now, or at all really. Okay, cheers!